a W. And it, was, right. and it was and it was WW. Well, as we are debating W's, hello and welcome <laughs> to the second season of Star Trek Fenrir. This is the second episode. It is a two-parter. And if you are unfamiliar with Fenrir or what's going on, I would recommend checking out my YouTube where I have all the VODs uh, to basically catch up on your own time because what else are you doing? You're at home like the rest of us. Well, maybe you're not, but that's a whole discussion we don't need to get into. Anyway, uh, really, I don't really have much to say at the start of today's session. As I said, it is a two-parter. Um, and we will, of course, have a sort of overarching uh, supplemental log as read by the players to sort of catch people up to speed. Uh, but before we get into any of that, let's just go ahead and do some quick intros around the table. So let's start with uh, Mr. Rast. Hey, hello, everyone. Uh, I am playing Commander Rast. My name is John, and I live in Seattle, Washington. And I can be found in lots of different places as Chubby Cobbled Gaming. Very good. Up next, Mr. Matic. Everybody, I play Matic. Um, typically, go by Matic in the community. Uh, live in Houston, Texas. Don't have that many socials. Uh, yeah, power chief systems. engineer who likes temporal shit. Not power <laughs> systems. You got to use power to use temporal. All right. Uh, okay, I'll give it to you. All right, and uh, up next we have our Juletta. Hi, I'm Watney. Um, I play Captain Brie Archuleta, a human female in her late 30s. Um, I'm one of three co-hosts of Beyond Trek Podcast, and you can find me on Twitter at Watney of BTP. Very nice. And then Mr. Vassar. Hey, everybody. I am Vassar. I am Fenrir's holographic Vulcan, uh, one of uh, a pair of science officers. And um, I am the third of third host for Beyond Trek Podcast. And you can find me at Trek Nexus, or if you're wandering around, I'm in Sacramento, California. Up next, we have Mr. Williams. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Aaron. I play Commander Williams, the chief of security for the Fenrir. I live in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, Canada. Uh, and you can find me at Panorama Tint uh, across all social media. Glad you're here. All right. And last but not least is Mr. Lee. Hi, my name is Matthew. I play Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin, one of the Fenrir science officers. He is a middle-aged Bajoran male who um, uh, is intensely religious. Very good. And I am the Game Master, ELH, also known as Q, Zeech, or very other sort of godly names. But in a pinch, Mike will also suffice. And with that, let's go ahead and run our intro. And you, that bit bomber, non, I saw you. Bit bombing again. I will find. Okay, we're gonna run the intro. We're gonna run the intro. <laughs> And welcome back, everyone. So, as I said in my little opening monologue, something I like doing is having my players read an opening monologue 
to sort of set the Star Trek feel of the adventure. And tonight, I believe Mr. Vassar has that honor. Thanks a lot, Yelich. <laughs> Science officer's log supplemental. An unexpected first contact with the subspace life forms called Shan has quickly spiraled into chaos as we find ourselves in the aftermath of a failed takeover of the USS Fenrir. We're also looking for a heavily armed Starfleet vessel that may have served as ground zero for an infiltration. At least 40 members of Fenrir's crew, all of whom from station Deep Space Daedalus are confirmed infected with these parasites. While the senior staff are currently unimpeded, it is unknown how long they can remain uncompromised. Shan persists in subspace, allowing them to phase through biological matter and dominate their hosts. Complicating security matters, there are two competing factions of Shan, one symbiotic and benign, one malignantly parasitic, and we lack a means to easily distinguish between the two safely. Our new ambassador of Atlachnasha seems not only to be able to detect these parasites using her remarkable sense of smell, but we are told that her kind also prey upon these organisms in the dreamlands. I cannot help but speculate that Shan are invading our realm due to overpredation in their native habitat. Despite their exodus, their actions cannot be easily dismissed. Possessing Starfleet officers and commandeering Federation property for means unknown is not a justifiable crime. While Fenrir security is absolutely paramount in the minds of all, there are ethical concerns at stake, not the least of which, but certainly the most surprising, are my own. This is a sentient species and a first contact situation, and I simply fed one of the parasitic Shen to Charlotte, our ambassador. Not 20 minutes prior, I temporarily held the captain hostage in her own ready room to ensure she was not also infected while a firefight erupted on the bridge. I suspect my time aboard Fenrir is influencing this newfound ability to circumvent my ethical subroutines. As a result, I found myself in conflict with my security directives. Should I go offline to perform a level one diagnostic, or should I remain vigilant and provide support to my peers? An organic crew member would not have this option, so I have chosen to stand with my shipmates. End log. Very nice. And I think you've covered most of the major points. So, yes, indeedy, uh, there has been a sort of an invasion, quote unquote, from a subspace entity known as the Shan, which are totally not ripped off Lovecraft. Totally not. Not at all. Um, but where we're going to start today's session is a little bit further from where we left off at the last session. And as a reminder, we left off with you all discussing with the peaceful Shan, uh, the peaceful faction of them anyway, um, what your options were moving forward. Um, but our first scene is going to be in one of the medical labs where we have Mr. Rast, Mr. Lee Tobin, and Mr. Vassar. All of you are working together to come up with a way to remove the Sean of either kind um, in a way that doesn't involve literally drilling a hole in someone's head. And if anybody else wants to be there, I can throw you in. But those three are the ones I wanted to at least start with. So I was going to say, Archuleta, if you want to bring in uh, your supporting character, I can certainly oh, throw them in. Oh, yeah. Throw a lull in there. All righty. I'll throw a lull in there. And if anybody has any other supporting characters that they'd like to throw in. I'm good. Okay. So yeah, let's take it from there. So the four of you are uh, just going over the latest test result. Lieutenant Allel, um, based on the ambassador's comments, we seem to know of one surefire way of extracting the Shan. Um, obviously, we're not going to go around the Okiri extracting the Shan by way of trepanation, but do you have any theories as to why that might be an effective means of combating them? Um, out of character, is that physically removing them? What so did you say? trepidation is the medical process by which you literally drill a hole in the head oh okay okay um well for now i assume the physical uh the physical aspect of it is why it's so effective but given that they're subspace creatures i would assume that we could also find a way of removing them without having to intervene in that way 
The Shan do seem to have a natural instinct for self-preservation. They might detect the damage to the host and perceive that as a, an immediate threat to their lives, causing them to retreat back into subspace. Hmm. So the question then is, how do we convince the Shan that the body is going through enough stress to evacuate? Maybe we induce some form of adrenaline response in the patients. Mm. Um, any ideas? Well, the use of cortical simulators could actually hyperstimulate the brain and induce some kind of feedback or electrochemical feedback that might make it an unpalatable environment for the Shan. Uh, Commander Vassar, do you have any opinions on the matter? I'm sorry, Lieutenant Commander. I was distracted with uh, subprocesses. Please say that again. Uh, Lieutenant Alel and I were considering different means of um, extracting the Shan by rendering the host bodies um, less habitable or less pleasant for them. Are you uh, all right, though, Commander? Uh, I believe it is nothing that can wait until this situation is resolved. As for applying methods of eliminating these parasites by increasing the stress levels of the host, we could... Um, there are several means we could use, uh, we could increase their cortisol levels. We could apply doses of cortisine to, uh, increase their additional stress levels. Um, that may create an unsuitable environment for the parasites. Hmm. Though it may not be the most ethical route, um, I would be interested to see what Telepath, uh, telepathic shock would do to a host. That's a relatively dangerous proposition, Commander, considering your recent experience. The collective consciousness of the Shan was capable of expelling you almost effortlessly when you tried to make telepathic contact with them. Yes, but if we focus on the mind of the individual rather than the mind of the Sham, the Shan, we uh, we may be able to cause distress within the within the host that would drive the parasite out. Hmm. Um, Commander, I would be worried about you exposing yourself to enough uh, psilocyanine to do something like that again. It could have effects that we could not reverse. I appreciate your concern, but I am not concerned. Well, I am not going to administer it to you. So. That's okay. Vassar seems rather uh, well-versed in doing so. I actually agree with the lieutenant. The dictates of medical ethics would likely preclude the use of this technique. <clears throat> medical ethics allow for the consent of the individual in targeting the dose and in dose. targeting the needs for many individuals uh the dose required to engage telepathically again as he did with the being at the bottom of the ocean was would be too high uh, we risk inducing a coma i still believe the consent is for commander rast to decide you do recall the maxim of our profession uh excuse me my former profession um first do, do no, no harm, harm. It is in my medical database to do no harm. Whatever happened to the customer is always right. That sounds like a... <laughs> and Rast kind of smiles. <laughs> We're not betting your life on slips of latinum here, Commander. I'm just not going to do it. 
we may be looking at this problem from the wrong angle. Rather than trying to apply a medical solution, we might think about the Shan as subspace life forms. In the past, subspace apertures have been closed using coherent graviton pulses. We might be able to modify the Fenris deflector array to create a kind of gravitic shell around a target vessel. Um, if we create a kind of oscillating series of pulses, we might be able to actually render that entire area of space uninhabitable for the Shan, forcing them out. You may have one momentum. Hmm. I love good techno babble. I would definitely be willing to observe and ensure the safety of the patient in that situation, but I feel as though we should involve Commander Maddock in that conversation as well. Certainly. I Maddox? do have oh, biogenic right. readings on the precise subspace frequencies used by the Shan when infiltrating a host. We may be able to apply that to your graviton beam. That would certainly be helpful, yes. All right. So we're going to treat this like an extended task. And Maddock will say that part of this is you being roped in from engineering to provide an assist. Um, but what this is going to be uh, is, I think Lee's going to lead this one. Uh, Lee, you're going to be doing either a control or a daring plus science. And uh, one other person will assist you. And one of the ship, one of the ship, the ship will assist you. Uh, the ship is going to assist with a computers and a science. Uh, again, you have one other assist. So if you want Maddox to assist, he'll be doing a daring engineering. If you want Vassar to assist, he'll be doing a... Uh, daring or control science, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, let me actually type out the work track and all that. So the work track is going to be a let's let's call it a twelve. Make it nice and easy. Uh, the magnitude is simply a three. The difficulty will also simply be a three, and there's going to be zero resistance on this. Okay, um, I'd like to take. A minute to try to focus my mind using mental repository, recalling what I can of the way in which the USS Enterprise D has sealed subspace rifts using graviton pulses mm -hmm. when engaging with the Solanogen life forms. And I will uh, also buy an extra die. So okay. I think that decreases the difficulty by one. Yes, it decreases the difficulty to a two, and you are rolling three dice. Okay, and applicable focus of subspace dynamics? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Now, who's and you have a success you? from the ship. Right, so you could potentially buy off that complication, but we do need to see at least another assist, unless you want to do this on your own. I would probably take the assist. Okay, so... Uh, I thought that was what we were going for. Is Vassar or Matic or even Rast helping you? Um, I would probably go for Vassar, but I'll let whoever wants to take that. I was going to volunteer... Um, in making sure that all of the adjustments are just as precise as the logs of the Enterprise-D. Okay. Let's have you do a control science then. And remember, if you're assisting, you just need to roll the one die. And uh, theoretical physics or no focuses on assists? You would have one. Okay. Okay. So I'm guessing you want to buy off that complication? Let's. Okay. So you get a grand total of one momentum after buying off the complication. And yeah, uh, Lieutenant Commander Lee, Lieutenant Commander Vassar, put your heads together. And sure enough, you have a potential schematic or a potential sort of frequency that you could use from the deflector to basically cause a graviton pulse to collapse a subspace aperture. Um, so you have step one. Step two is how do you apply it to the Sean specifically? So what we're going to do here is, uh, Lee, I need you to roll me seven challenge dice to represent how much work you've got done. Okay. Wow, that is a significant amount of work. Wow. So, as I said, you, you have the foundation. You just now need to extend it to the Sean. And that's just going to be another sort of simply roll across the board. Daring science for Lee. Control science for Vassar. Ship is still computer science. And if you want to do mental repository again to bring that down to a difficulty of one, 
by all means. Would testing a theory and theory into practice then apply? It definitely would. So that would be a difficulty zero task then? I believe so. And I roll three dice naturally because of the other talent. So daring. Two successes from the ship. Very nice. 3d20 and applicable focus. All right. So you're sitting at uh, four momentum right now. See if uh, Vassar can get you another success or two. Unfortunately not, but hey, four momentum. So what I would say is that, again, you've now found out a way to apply to the Sean. Um, but maybe now the sticking point is not so much concentrating the gravitic pulse so that it only affects the Sean. The problem is, is you don't have a way to, to differentiate between the two factions of Sean. Like all the scans you have don't seem to indicate ways to distinguish a quote-unquote good Sean from a quote-unquote bad Sean. Um, but go ahead and just for, you know, bookkeeping's sake, go ahead and roll me another seven challenge die. That's more than enough. So yeah, as I said, we end this extended task with you having a method to force the Sean out of reality. Uh, but there are going to be some caveats to it. The target has to be unshielded, meaning if you were to fire this at the Okita, they would have to have no shields. Um, and if you were to do this to the Okita, it would affect all Sean, as in it would affect both factions. So just keep those two caveats in mind. All right. Well, Commander, uh, I believe that with Lieutenant Commander Vassar's assistance, we've been able to uh, calibrate the Graviton Pulse sufficiently to drive all the Shan out of a localized area of space. However, it doesn't discriminate between the various different factions. I think that we might have to rely on your plan, much as I am against it, if we want to understand which group of Shan we're dealing with at any given moment. Uh, telepathic contact might be necessary or the assistance of the other Shan. It dawns on me that the ambassador was able to detect the Shan using all factory senses. I wonder if she might be able to determine the two different clans, so to speak if there is a biological basis to their allegiance. Hmm. The Shan also suggested, or the, the renegade peaceful Shan, said that they would be detected the moment they got close to the other hive mind. Perhaps they could identify members of their own sect in the same way. It'd be worth talking to them and to find out, and to and to Charlotte. It it may be beneficial to pursue both avenues of detection. Well, it sounds to me like this now needs to be a senior staff meeting. So let's have a senior staff meeting. So we cut to the conference room. <laughs> Where all of the senior staff, uh, plus Charlotte, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how are we spelling Charlotte, by the way? Because I can fix her token up now while you guys are chatting. C-H-A-R-L-O-T-T-E. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to do the, like, a, like a, a Charlotte like that or a... What was the other one? So, because I can spell oh, Charlotte. Oh. The Vulcan spelling would pro would not be preferable. So you want it to be Charlotte like that? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Archuleta, you're there. Rast, you're there. Williams, you're there. Vassar, Lee, Maddock, you're all there. Uh, Charlotte, Ambassador Charlotte, is sort of in the back of the room, in the corner, because there's not really room for her around the table. But she's actively engaged within conversation, so take it away. Um, has anyone briefed the captain? Yeah, Rast would have handed her a written brief as soon as they walked in. Okay. Um, so, which one of you made the recommendation 
to see if our ambassador could smell the difference. I did, Captain. Not to be rude, Ambassador, but can you? She thinks for a moment, maybe licks her lips and says, can't smell them, but I can taste them. But that sort of defeats the purpose, I believe. <laughs> how, many lick, how many licks does it take? <laughs> uh, my route was easily prohibited. I mean, for a point of reference, one tastes like your chicken. The other tastes more like a goat. Don't ask me why I know what goat tastes like. I'm not sure I even know what goat tastes like. There was goat in one of the stews we sampled earlier. You should try it. It's it's quite good. Hmm. Uh, okay, so what is this about using our deflector array to basically force them out with subspace pulses? Is that Andrew right? B, it was your plan. I believe you deserve the honor. Oh, uh, Please, Commander. Um, I'm sure you can explain it far better than I. We have reconfigured the deflectors to produce a coherent graviton pulse that will, in a localized area of space, push the Sean into or out of our realm into their into subspace. The downside of that is it does not discriminate between either faction. All Sean in that area would be eliminated. Just, sorry, go ahead. Oh, well, do we know anything about the, what's the Okita? Yeah. Um, do we know anything more about their, uh, the workings of the crew? Like, are these factions making themselves known? Who was it that, out of character, who was it that gave us the info on the other ship? Uh, the one that gave you the Okita information I was... Commodore Unis, I believe. Yep, Commodore Unis, also known as Com Commodore the One, who may or may not be Neo. Yeah, was that the person that told us they were able to outgun us, though? Yes, they were the one. Yeah, so the handout that is uh, the USS Okita information, all of that would have come from the Commodore. Well, we've got two options. We attempt the prefix codes. We can lower the shields remotely and then utilize the pulse if that's the direction we choose to go. Otherwise, uh, we'd have to find some way to level the playing field if we want to slug it out with them. Is the um, mention of Rast's idea in the report? Yes. What he wanted to do? OK. Mm -hmm. um, Commander, or Mr. Rast, um, can you explain a little bit more what you intended with your method? I would kind of like to see if uh, we were able to get a hold of a infected host, whether I could assault that person's mind in such a way that it would force the entity out. So without making direct contact to the entity, instead traumatizing the host, make it an unsuitable environment for the entity. Would that have to be like a one by one method? Oh, I believe so. Unless there was a way that we could potentially amplify that. There would also be notes of objection to that course of action in the log. Uh, no, actually. <laughs> Since, since did, Rast did, wrote it. Oh. Um, I thought so... that he would have attached his, his objection to that in the log. Well, maybe that's a discrepancy. Maybe he says there isn't in the report, but then you literally say it just now. Is that something that you're <laughs> able to do right now? Or would you need another dosage of whatever? I believe having another dosage would be the preferred way to do it. Or we could speak to one of the two individuals that we currently have on the ship and see if they'd be willing to subject themselves to potentially telepathic trauma. 
Well, the command of rest. The, the issue I see with it, just looking at every as the human body is a machine. If I go to push a virus or a parasite or something out of one line of coding, what stops it from just going to the next line? So what happens whenever you have to do this to every single person and all of a sudden the entire crew is mentally fucked? How long does it take for... I guess that would come down to how long does it take for this entity to attach itself to a new host? What kind of What kind of status is it in during that procedure? Is there a way to potentially trap the entity after it is ejected from a host? But the other thing that hasn't been considered is, you know, it may be possible for you to do this telepathic attack, but what happens if they push back and they attack you instead, and now all of a sudden you're just a husk on the ground? There were, um, there are notable risks to this course of action. Um, which is why the other courses of action were noted, uh, noted. But for the sake of completeness, we wanted to dis we wanted to disclose all potential courses of action. I think you should try it. So Charlotte uh -huh. raises her hand. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to intrude, but if you're talking about assaulting a mind one by one has it has been said that will take time time that you may not have i do know of a way that you could induce a dreamlike state to a large group and you could uh, basically use an area of effect rather than an individual basis and will that force the parasites out it would depend on the commander, and it's worth saying that I am not sure how a mortal would react to the drug in question, but it is on the table. I did want to mention it. Regardless of what that drug may be, the thing is, is that that dreamlike state, if you're referring to, you know, what occurred to us whenever we were stuck in the Tholdian web and we came and met your predecessor or met you... <clears throat> We were all still individuals. This is a hive mind that has the collective knowledge of collective telepathic power of 40 individuals working together. How do we know that it won't turn the dreamscape against us honestly, or against the commander? Honestly, it's entirely on the commander's shoulders in that regard, which is why this is a very risky plan of action. Does this, does this telepathic contact hinge upon actual physical perception or can it be done remotely my concern is if we have to get the commander aboard the okita in some way that's going to be a pretty tall order and if he could do it from the fenrir how close do we have to get i mean how long do we have to hold on and that brings up the question to the ambassador uh, on what the range um what the range and capabilities of this area effect enhancement would actually be how much you want to bet it's within phaser range unfortunately the lieutenant or the commander is right you would have to be rather close literally out of character close range uh you would have to be at close range and you would have to deliver the same drug to the entire okita to be effective you could try it on a smaller scale i suppose first with rast and those abo aboard the fenrir but if you wish to affect the Okita crew, you would need some way to get into their, um, what do you call it, the uh, life-sustaining systems? Life support systems, that's what they're called. We could use the prefix code to order Okita to use, uh, such as, to produce the intended effect through the life support systems. Well, that assumes they haven't changed the prefix codes. I assume that the Shan are able to uh, assimilate the memories of any of their hosts. They would certainly be aware of that if that's the case. The ambassador just sort of slowly nods and goes, yeah. 
If we could board the Akita, we could also try to disable its shield generators. That way our gravitic pulse would actually be able to affect the vessel. I've got a follow-up question, Commander Lee, about the pulse itself. Is there any risk to our deflector dish? If we use it and it doesn't work, we may end up stranding ourselves out here with a hop force. Well, Commander, I'm afraid that would actually be an engineering question. I've calibrated the deflector properly using the appropriate uh, gravitic waveguides, but uh, the actual impact of its use or potential misuse would probably be a question that has to be directed to Commander Maddock. Maddock, what do you think? Well, how large is the Akita compared to the Fenrir? Uh, you are both scale five. Okay. Um, seeing as it's as we're similar sized ships, um, it would be a power draw of sorts, but it wouldn't be much more of a power draw than if we decided to do the bubble around ourselves. The issue you would come across is, you know, you start, you know, you power on the deflector array and uh, you start to form, you start forming the belt bu bubble. I'm assuming that off the assumption that, you know, they have an engineer who's thinking, who they have somebody on their side who is thinking, you know, how can we stop people from getting us out? They have considered this. So now all of a sudden you have a backup plan that causes a uh, inverse uh, wave disruption. Next thing you know is we're out of deflector dish and no way to defend ourselves against any other Shen that decide to come over. And I'm not sure if this is in the report um, out of game, but do we need to drop our own shields to utilize that, or can we, can we protect uh, it through our shields? Out of character, you can potentially transmit the beam uh, with your shields up, but just remember that in order to transport from point A to point B, you have to lower your shields, and both raising and lowering the shields, you can only do once per round. So if combat does break out, you, whenever you lower your shields, that is for the entire round. You have to wait an entire round to bring them back up. Um, you know, I, the 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 issue we've right. been having is uh, utilizing, you know, Commander Rass's uh, telepathic attack, utilizing Ambassador Charlotte to taste test everybody, all of them using this Graviton, is there's no way for us to really distinguish between the two separate factions. Um, my personal opinion is that whenever it comes down to it, uh, send them all back, let them sort it out themselves. Um, but until such a time, whenever that is a last resort option, uh, I believe while I was dealing with uh, the ensigns in engineering, there was one of the Shin gave you a, an apples to oranges uh, <clears throat> uh, metaphor to describe the two different uh, factions of the Shin. Uh, judging off of how other telepaths were, judging off of how machines were communicating to each other, have there been any scans to see how one hive mind is not able to be affected by another hive mind without willing consent or without one hive mind trying to touch the other one for instance could one hive mind be pro be projecting their tele their uh telepathic communication at you know 15 hertz the other one's tell is doing it at 15.01 there's just enough difference that you can tell the difference between them but not enough that they can't still interact with each other should they decide to what I would say is if you spend two momentum to create that advantage, that will be the case. Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> In my opinion. Do we have two momentum? You've got four, four at the four. moment. Okay. I'm of the opinion we should do that. Okay. So let's say then as part of your research into the Sean is yes, you have identified as Maddock has put it quite eloquently, I think um, the 
quote unquote normal hive mind is 15 hertz or some bar. Um, and then the quote unquote peaceful Sean are like 15.001. So very subtle difference and they still can interact with one another, but there is a means of isolation if need be. Okay, so I think we have a few different plans. Um, but first we have to find the Okita. Because I don't, out of character, I don't have information on the whereabouts. Um, so um, I think Astro, mm, Astrometrics and... Um, given the fact that we're in uncharted space and our operations team should work on locating the ship. Um, Mr. Rass, if you would head that initiative. Uh, once we find the ship, <clears throat> we should uh, broadcast on the peaceful Shan frequency, give them an opportunity to make themselves known um and that's something we know now right mm -hmm. okay uh give them an opportunity to make themselves known and if not if if they don't somehow like show us that they're willing to either help us or distinguish themselves somehow from the the other type of shan then we will use the deflector array method I'm going to spend thread here because, uh, Captain, there's a chime at your comm edge, and it's from the bridge. Go ahead. Uh, sir, we've got the Okita on long-range scans. It is headed towards us at uh, warp 9.95. Uh, I, I found them, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Commander. <laughs> What time will it Captain, be in we might want. <laughs> Captain, we might want to see uh, how their uh, pylon stress is doing right now. Um, depending on how far they've gone at that high warp speed, uh, we may have a lot less time than we would like. Well, also, Dag, I think you had something. Uh, speaking to the officer coming from the bridge, uh, what time will they be in communications range? Uh, about three minutes, sir. May I suggest a ruse, Captain? Oh, I love I'm a good listening. ruse. If I'm we listening. do not, if we do not know the state of their ship, let them show their cards first, so to speak. If we must maintain the idea that we have been uh, possessed by the Shan, uh, that may get them to lower their guard until we can better ascertain their situation. Do we know the range of? the and she's kind of looking at the ambassador do we know the range of when they can pick up the fact that we have two here on in the peaceful faction well, if they if can I... detect them then they will probably know that we are aware of them and if we can detect that none of their own faction is aboard or in control of the ship then is there a way that we can potentially simulate uh, transmissions we could... on that frequency we could uh use the Graviton from the uh, deflector array that Commander Tobin's already, uh, or Commander Lee is already uh, modified, and we could set up an interference network. We would just have to become really good at bluffing, mm. and we would be able, we would need to say that that interference network was set up before the ship was taken control, and we are right. still working on lowering it. Is there is there a way that we could make it seem as though some type of shipboard malfunction is the cause that may lessen their suspicion well we might yeah. not need to depending on what the we've ambassador knows we've already sustained damage to several eps conduits uh, from the takeover attempt sir we've got about a minute captain i can make it look like me and a couple of others are doing a last ditch uh, effort in engineering. Uh, go for it, Mr. Maddock. Maddock will get up, grab a couple uh, ensigns that he trusts, probably Jensen also for some reason. 
Um, and he's just, he's just going to start making stuff like lightly explode from engineering. Lightly explode. <laughs> I, would like, I would like to point out the captain of the Okita is a joint trill, and that may have some kind of effect on their ability to be possessed, whether easier or more difficult. We will probably find out by initiating visual contact and finding out who is in command of the Okita now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just give me one more second to get everybody situated, and we will cut to the bridge. Uh, let's put the ambassador over here. All right, so you uh, adjourn the senior staff meeting and emerge onto the bridge right as the view screen uh, begins to chime, and uh, your comms officer says, uh, Captain, we have an incoming hail. Um out of character. Dag, where did you get that information about them being a trill? That was the information Vassar was able to determine about the USS Okita and is okay. a document that Vassar has access to. Okay. Would we have access to that? Oh, you know what I just realized? That's why there's confusion here. The only one who yeah. can see it is Dag. That's that's probably what the confusion is. <laughs> I literally is. reread so, both and I was like, what? Where? Before we before we move forward, uh, yeah, let's, the Okita let's show this is to, show an Arbitage class vessel. It's a tactic. It's got a tactical operation missile mission profile. It is equipped with advanced shields, rapid fire torpedo launchers, and fast targeting systems. And its captain is Rassi Beer, a joined trill. And this is not a like a covert ship. Like this would be on record. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. On screen, please. All right. And appearing on screen is the bridge of the Okita. And uh, interestingly, what you're seeing is the captain, Captain Beer herself. And she seems to be sitting just very relaxed in her chair. And uh, she, again, is trill, which means she has spots that run uh, two lines down either side of her body. Uh, she has, uh, interestingly, blonde hair. Might be dyed, you're not really sure, but you're pretty sure trill hair doesn't get that color normally. Uh, she also has startlingly blue eyes. And uh, she just sort of smiles as she looks at you, Captain Archilla, and says, Ah, Captain, what brings you to my neck of the woods? Ah, uh, well, our, our mission takes us out here, Captain Beer. Uh, my question to you is, what's the rush to get here? You were traveling so quickly. Well, we were simply concerned that there had been some sort of problem. We didn't uh, put out a distress signal. Mm. There is a moment of hesitation, and anyone, does anybody have a focus in people reading, in insight? Xenobiology? Because she's trill. Xenopsychology. Dang it! You win. And, and for that matter, behavioral, ana <laughs> behavioral analysis. I'll give uh, Rast nice. behavioral analysis. So Rast, <laughs> roll me a insight and command difficulty of three. Got me, uh... Y'all got me more of that momentum. <laughs> we should have two. We have two, two left. Yep. Yeah, I'll use one. <clears throat> hey, GM, could I potentially assist Commander Rass with my interrogation focus? If you tell me how you're going to do it without talking across the bridge. I mean, we, we, we're each sitting at consoles. This is true. Passing notes. <laughs> uh, as, for lack of a better term, as a cop, uh, I think William's... You know, May know Will somebody's Williams lying. and Rast have that silent buddy language going on. Sure, I'll allow <laughs> it. Language. But the complication range will increase to an 18 to 20. Um, what would you like me to roll? Uh, for you, also an insight command or an insight con. But you have the three successes you need already, so just don't roll a complication. No pressure, right? Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. So you actually get that momentum Thank right that back. that momentum, yeah. <laughs> so Williams and Rast looking together, you can tell that beer is stalling for time. And Williams, you're already detecting that the weapon systems of the Okita are charged and beginning to target on your upper left pylon. Um, can I send a 
prompt to the captain's, you know, armrest console. Mm -hmm. Just letting her know that. Uh, shields up and red alert. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Um, I'm just gonna go that route. Okay. Cool. Okay, she, so are we still on screen though? Yeah, I was gonna say. So you're still on screen. Yeah. So, so she's gonna stand and um, she is going to pause for a second and then let the red alert clacks on kind of blare a bit, mm -hmm. and then she'll address the captain. And um, she'll say, we don't have to, um, we don't have to do it this way. And Beer just sort of looks at you and then very disturbingly begins to laugh. This is a laugh of a mad woman. The mm -hmm. laugh of someone who is not all there, as it were. And uh, as she comes down from the laughing fit, she goes, <laughs> No, 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 no. See, what's going to happen is we're going to take over your vessel. We're going to put us in your head. And then we are going to take over your little Starfleet Empire. Fire. And the view screen cuts off and the Okita opens fire. So we are going to cut to Starship yeah. Combat. Cool. So as a reminder, uh, we do have handouts for everything. If you are confused about what your role can do, there should be a handout applicable to your station. Um, but what I'm going to ask is, uh, Williams, you, what is your daring score? Um, Williams' daring score is 11. Is an and 11. He also, has, he also has enhanced. That's true. Right? I think he has. Don't you have augmented? Or am I yeah, thinking? I think it's augmented in the daring, yeah. Or is it control? Uh, it is control. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So what I would say is between the Okita crew and the Fenrir crew, you both have equal daring, which means it can be either of your turns first. So I will defer to let you all go first. We didn't even get to try out the frequency thing. <laughs> I thought that ship, like though. I thought that like while they were coming in, that's something that was being set up and da da da. If you spent oh, it wasn't moments, set up yet. I was to say you literally had minutes to Three set minutes. this up. Yeah, yeah. What if like Maddox like working on it? If you give me the while two momentum you have, I will allow you to have gotten that done. He's just trying to kill us by taking away all our momentum, leaving him with a pool of it's threat. Episode two, he can't do that. <laughs> of season two. I mean, this is, yeah. We've got one Apparently, good y'all haven't seen Firefly. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Time oh. and place, okay? Time oh. and place. Um, it's a deep cut. I'm okay with giving the momentum because I feel like it's good to have it in our pocket. But I'm, I'll am i defer to you guys. Go ahead and give it away. Yeah, take it. Okay. Um, Damage done to one to somebody who is taken over by the Shin, is that shared across the hive mind? Um, no. So if you were to phaser one, well, at least as far as you know, if you phaser one and it really, really hurts like you have it on maximum, it doesn't replicate to the other Sean. Oh. Okay, so in terms of the deflector option, mm -hmm. we didn't have time to set that up either, did we? You did. I mean, that was part of the whole science thing that we did. Oh, earlier. that was earlier. Okay. The graviton okay. beam is the configuration for it is in the settings for the deflection. Okay, mission. but shields have to be down, and it will take them all out. Yes. That's the caveat. Okay. Cool. I want to go first. Okay. Um. I just want to fire. Well, uh, just so we can look at distances here. So right now, you are at long range from each other. So unfortunately, the only thing you could hit with is really torpedoes. Mm -hmm. And that's already a uh, difficulty three shot. Mm. Okay. Uh, but what you but can do, Captain. Yeah, I also have threat. 
Um, but what you can do, Captain, is you have the ability to do what is called a rally action. And this is basically a presence command. And it's a difficulty of zero, so it's free momentum. And really, you can do this as much as you want on your turns. But you have to give a speech, is the caveat, is you have to give an inspiring speech for the rally to work. Okay, good to know. <laughs> is it, are we taking individual turns here? Well, it, it's in Starship Combat, it's across all the players. So it's whichever one of you wants to act first. Okay. Um, someone else go. Um, oh, wait a second. Did I set my shit up right or no? Never mind, I didn't set my shit up right. Manic cannot count on violating the temporal accords this time. <laughs> Bet. Just wait. Um, He'll find a way. So, uh, Maddox sends out a message to all iterations of him, and all of a sudden, a thousand uh, Fenrir show up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> The rally uh, <laughs> task is not a bad idea, nor is taking evasive actions to set up for future actions. Mm -hmm. But I forget we can always split into three. You can. That is an option. We would like to close the range with the primary deflector. If we if we get to a closer range, we can potentially jack Rast up with enough silasiline to try that area. Oh no, that's a drug. Never mind. Sorry. Does the Okina's profile maybe talk about multi-vector assault mode if it has it? Uh, yeah, you would know as an Armitage class, it's a carrier type vessel. It definitely does not multi-vector. But a carrier may have fighters aboard. Mm-hmm. Hmm. He did this quick. Well, in the absence of you guys acting, I'm going to spend threat to let the Okita go. <laughs> we got rid of some threat. All right. So the yeah, Okita yeah. is going to motor on a little bit closer. Good. And then I'll spend some more threat to let it act again. It's going to shoot at you with its phasers. I think it's, uh, it's going to do well. But I'm also giving an additional die with some threat. Because I have so much of it. Well, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news, there really isn't good news. Uh, so that's three successes. Uh, they are going to do a grand total of seven damage. Versatile two, so you lose four resistance. Your resistance is five or seven. I forget if you have ablative. Uh, we do have ablative. You do have ablative. So seven. Okay. So, yeah, it's seven damage. So you lose... Four of that resistance, so you take only, surprisingly, if I do my math in my head properly, you only take three damage to your shields. We would take four damage. Did I math that right? If we lose, if if it goes from seven resistance to... <laughs> it's four. <laughs> it's four, and I'm going to spend another threat. This is a big threat spend. I'm going to spend another threat to make that five total damage, which would breach you. So let's uh, let's see what gets hit. Your structure. So before I do any rolling, the Okita, the uh, port side phaser strip, begins to charge up a beam of orange light. And uh, from two sections of the strip, they begin to coalesce into a single point. And then an orange beam of a phaser lances out and strikes the Fenrir, the Fenrir on its, uh, let's say, its starboard side of the saucer. And the beam sort of pierces through the shields a little bit, clips the hull, and pretty much bores a hole right through it. So let's see if any of you are actually hurt by this. Good news, no named casualties. But that is the Okita's turn, and it is now the Fenrir's turn. I would suggest rallying for momentum. Or taking evasive action. Okay. I would concur. Um, what do I roll for rally? A presence command. Difficulty of zero. Okay. Um, if we return fire, mm -hmm. as um, 
the quick to action talent so we could retain the initiative for free uh, and still do one of those other things I would suggest setting up for that attack by using scan for weaknesses or attack pattern or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's got to be done in the first round of combat. Yep. Um, I have inspiration as a focus. Yeah, that would definitely apply. Cool. So Bray's going to open a channel to um, the whole ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, your crew to your battle stations. Um, the USS Okita has been compromised, and we are the last bastion against making sure that the Shan do not take over the Federation. So smoke them if you got them, because <laughs> we're about <laughs> we're about to engage in combat, and um, I trust you will all do a fine job as you have served me well. All right, let's see that presence command. Also, let me know if the music's too loud on stream or on. I can uh, barely guys. hear it. So. All right, so. Uh, oh, that's do, always good. You do oh. get a momentum, but uh, I'm gonna say the uh, the complication what? is that uh, maybe some officers are like, "Why does she sound so hesitant? What's Beep. what's going on with the captain?" <laughs> She's and, one of them. No. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe there's some sort of like two thing. successes. Oh, right, because uh, presence, she has augmented, augmented. presence. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you an opportunity here, uh, Watney. You can either have your two momentum or you can buy off that complication and effectively have done nothing. <laughs> momentum. 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 Okay. So uh, as the crew is mumbling to one another, uh, do you want to use your quick to action now? or your next turn. Sorry, I just want to know, are you saying spend the momentum or keep it? I want to keep it. Okay. Um, if we do quick to action, I can regenerate our shields and get our shields back. Yeah, do it. Okay. So, Matic, you are going to be doing a restore shields action, which I believe is a control engineering Assisted by the ship's structure engineering, the difficulty is a one. Uh, before I go to power systems, uh, mm -hmm. warp field dynamics because you have to have the shields in order to do the warp field at all. No. Or phaser-based mm -hmm. weaponry to try to, as I increase the shields, make it to where they're more resistant to... Major that would weapon. be a modulate shields, not a regenerate shields. Okay. So then I just have to, I guess I have to go with power systems. Mm hmm Now it also has a power requirement of one, just so you know. But you've got power to sit. You've, you've got 17 power. You can throw as much power as you want around. Two, yes. All right, well, the one success is all you need to immediately get back to shield. And for every point of momentum or threat, you get two more points of shield. What's our shield at? It's 11. Out 11 out of what? 14. 14. Y'all want to do a threat for two more shield? I mean, you spent a bunch already. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you one more I'm threat in. for another no, shield. That, that, that's exactly the opposite. You spent a bunch. Shield. Let's not give him more. <laughs> You'll get two shield out of yeah. it. Yeah. That's dangerous. For another thing of uh inner yep. of shield. Alright. Back to square one. Yep, back to square one. Alright, so up next is gonna be the Okita, and the Okita is actually going to be doing a scan for weakness on you all. And uh does roll a complication as a result, which is interesting. Uh I'm gonna give you guys two momentum instead of uh taking that complication. But yes, you would detect, nice. Williams, that their scanners are locking on to that pylon they were locking on to earlier. And based on what you know of the Akita, the next shot could very well take out that entire pylon. But it is now the Fenrir's turn again. So scan for weaknesses, pay to momentum, and then fire? Now, what I would say is you cannot quick to action again. 
as in you cannot have two different actors act back to back, but you can have the same actor act twice with a swift task. I thought you could also pay two momentum to have two characters go. Well, that's what the swift task does. Uh, well, I think I, let's back it up a little bit. So, quick to action is a free use of the retain initiative, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where the confusion is. Is the retain initiative is what lets two characters operate on the same quote unquote turn. Um, there's also a way that a single character can do two actions by spending two momentum for what is known as a swift task. And that increases the difficulty of the next task, um, things of that nature. So by using quick to action, you have already done the keep the initiative round or action, okay. and you can only do that once per round. All right. Thanks for the clarification. Of course. Yeah. It. Trust me. Starship combat is it's an art form to get right. Um, Marie will order fire at will if anyone wants to. Captain, do we that. wish to do we wish to go to multi multi vector? No, we are not doing. We're not splitting this into three <laughs> tinier pieces. Um, so I'm guessing we can't like try and get a hold of the peaceful ones during combat. You can actually. Okay. I mean, what do we have? The two that are on our ship on the bridge or somewhere within contact you could say matic has been engin engineering probably for all i care mm -hmm. yeah i mean we i mean if they could contact the peaceful ones we wouldn't need to broadcast it so but that we run the risk of the the hostile ones mm -hmm. like hearing us hearing it yep but yeah what's uh what's going down where are the current uh Good, good uh, sh uh, shans on our ship. There, let's say they're in engineering with Matic. Okay. Okay, I want to try and reach the peaceful ones. Okay. I mean, well, actually, I don't know because they could blow us up at any second. So, at well, this if we reach out to the peaceful ones and we could tell them, "Hey, go to engineering, push this button, fuck their shit up, just drop their shields." Yeah, you know, we don't know who they have taken over. Yeah, I okay. Yeah, that's she what I want to do. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Archuleta, or I guess technically this would be anyone who's actually opening up the channel, and then Archuleta can speak. Um, this is going to be a control engineering, and the ship will assist you with a communications and engineering. And I'm going to say that this is a difficulty of two based on uh, communication problems, not just with your ship, but with the Okita for reasons that may become apparent. Uh, I'll, do the, I'll do this ship. Okay. I guess engineering and because I have the two friendlies with us, I should do it. Well, if you do it, Matic, it increases in difficulty to three because you've already acted this round. Right. But I mean, if, if it's up, it's up to everybody else. My engineering sucks. I have a three in engineering. I think I, I think Lee's got this. Okay. So it was engineering and and control. And I will spend a momentum to get an extra die. Okay. No applicable focus. Sensor operations. Yeah, Some unfortunately, not any here. Well, not that you need it. You get a total of four successes across the board, so two momentum, which I believe caps you. Very Five, nice. I think, because I spent one. Ah, good call. But yeah, uh, Lee, you open up a channel, and Captain, what do you say? Um, this is the captain of the Fenrir. We know that there are two factions of you, clearly a hostile group, but we also know that there are peaceful ones aboard. Now is your chance to get off the ship and to help us. So whoever's listening, 
go to engineering and disable their shields. Okay. So you remember that complication earlier? No. That you didn't take? Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just say that you send off your message and you hope and pray. Love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now that <laughs> is... Uh, that is the Fenrir's turn, unless Lee would like to uh, swift task. Uh, no, I don't believe so. Okay. So what the Okita does is uh, it decides it wants to uh, regenerate some power, which it does. And that is the Okita's turn, and we come back to the Fenrir. Cool. Would it be a hold action for Vassar to monitor uh, from either science or tactical, the mm -hmm. status of the Okita shields. With the intention being that the moment they go down, you fire that beam, yeah? Uh, yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, I would say you would just tell me that you're doing that. Okay. <clears throat> so I believe uh, that is, who is, who's not acted? I don't think Rast has acted, and I don't think um, Williams well, has acted. doing the hold. Yeah, Dag's doing a hold, so that leaves Rast and Williams left on the Fenrir to act. So it's whichever way you two want to do. Go ahead, Williams. Did, did the pew pew? Shay sure, just saying, all right, <laughs> returning fire. Do you want to target a system, or? I think. Yeah, you know, we've got some momentum I can spend. Um, so I am going to target their weapons. Okay. Do you have fast targeting systems or... Because I don't think you do. Uh, we do not. Which means that if you do target their weapons, it is a difficulty of three. Yep, that's fine. Okay. So it's going to be a control security from Williams. The ship will assist you with a weapon security. The difficulty is a three. And... Um... I am going to, uh, you know what, I will uh, tap my value and the threat, whatever it takes, okay. uh, to use determination. Okay. And I'll go ahead and roll my, I believe that's control security. Yep. Fedmir has already gotten you an assist. I think and, you have. Uh, I have augmented control, so that's an additional... Yep, so that's three successes, four successes on the board already. And I have uh, Shipboard Tactical Systems as a focus. All right, so that is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six successes. So Ooh. that is three momentum, which means you have two over cap. So you basically have four momentum you can spend without needing to touch your pool. So what are you spending your four floating momentum on? I am going to go ahead and spend some on, you know, let's spend, I believe if I, I spend momentum on penetration, it's two penetration for every point of momentum. Correct. Okay. Um, I will spend two on penetration. Okay. Um, and you might want to roll damage before you spend the other two though. I think you yeah, can do that. And then I'll probably yeah. do the, probably do the rerolls. So, um, remember we have the, uh, Fenrir phaser macro for that extra <laughs> yep. sound goodness. Alrighty, so let's see, that is uh, six damage. Would you like to re-roll any of those zeros? Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll all three of those. Okay. All right, so, well, it looks like it, uh, yeah. It, all right, so we'll take the first three. So that's another two damage. So that would be a grand total of seven, no, eight damage, which minus three is five. That is enough to cause a breach. So go ahead and uh, hit. Can I also let's see? Add uh, the last one as a uh, one one point of bonus damage. Okay. So uh, instead of doing the one bonus point, I would say they do it as a power loss. That way they lose a point of power, and then yeah. if we can just kind of make them just lose power. Oh, that, that also works, yeah. I'd be, let's do that instead. All right, we'll do that instead. So the Fenrir, uh, narratively what happens, Williams, you tap the button skillfully, and 
fire out your own lance of energy towards the Okita. Uh, this time, uh, it impacts their, uh, let's say, their starboard side phaser strip. And it does cause a breach to their weapons. And uh, I'm just looking up to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Because I believe... Yes, they must take the restore minor action. Alrighty, noted. So yeah, what that essentially means is the Okita cannot act this round again. So, Rast, what are you doing? Uh, so, am I able to uh, to fire weapon as well? You would, but it would be at an increased difficulty. Actually, sure, what, is, what is your security score? Because there's, there's been a lot of back and forth discussion four. about this. Okay, if it's a four, actually, no, you can fire twice. All right, he is going to... Uh fire uh fire a, a spread of torpedoes okay so just so you know uh, uh firing a threat. torpedo is one threat firing a salvo of torpedoes is three threat but the benefit of doing a salvo is it has the spread effect which is basically a second attack at half the damage you roll and it also has a plus one to the damage like you roll an additional die Okay. Enjoy your three, th uh, three th threat. There All right. That's that's my boy. All righty. <laughs> so Rast, you're rolling a control and a security. Someone okay. needs to get weapon security from the ship, and I'm gonna spend some threat here. That uh, the complication range is 17 to 20. Okay. You're gonna buy some extra dice too. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm gonna buy. I guess I can buy three with what we've got you could spend all six <laughs> to get three yes there you go <laughs> you had momentum at one point <laughs> you monster wow we like to burn through you that ass. <laughs> you said smoke if you got him this is true all right so control security uh, and that's a total of 5d20 right uh, don't worry. Uh, it should be, yeah. And there's no focus, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's fidget determination. I'm gonna oh. spend my determination to reroll. I want to give him my determination. Too. Oh my god! <sighs> oh. Man. Yeah, that for Fuck. those who can't see a screen right now, he has rolled five zeros and two complications like that is impressive <laughs> actually no hold on that is a 14 a 14 a 15 and 15. two 20s wow yeah so we'll we'll, uh, we'll take that shot again <laughs> <sighs> with uh, the captain generously giving me her uh, <sighs> her determination mm -hmm. let's try that a second time don't waste it Significantly hey. better. Significantly. Whoa. Okay. So you and get no complications. No, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that's a fourteen. So uh, you do get three momentum because it was only a difficulty of two. And yeah, Rast, go ahead and roll me some phaser damage. Torpedoes. Uh, torpedoes. Oh, torpedo damage. Correct. And right, just how do I do it as a salvo? Uh, you're gonna roll the Fenrir torpedoes macro, and then you're gonna roll a additional one die. Now, the question I have to ask you, were you firing quantums or were you firing photons? Because there's a big difference. Um, just photon torpedoes. Okay. Well, let me let me back it up because it might not be, it might be in your favor to say this. If you fire quantums, you have the vicious effect, which means all those effect you rolls are essentially twos. Yeah. Let's fire some quantum torpedoes. All right, quantums it is. Okay. And again, this is mostly a learning experience since most of our ship combats up to this point. And there's point your extra can... D20. Or not D20, sorry. Uh, extra challenge die. Oh, extra challenge die. Yeah. Can we take that extra 15 as damage? to the? No. Okay. But you can take that additional effect, though. So let's count effects here. Uh, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is 14. 10. So yeah, I think it's 14. <laughs> so... You also have, well, no, because you fired Photon, or you fired Quantums. Um, do you want to them to just take the 14? Do you want to spend momentum on getting rid of Resistance? Yeah, let's uh, let's spend one momentum for Resistance um, reduction. 
Okay. So, uh, a volley of blue light streak out from underneath the Fenrir, uh, right around where the main deflector is. They, the torpedoes soar out and collide with the Okita and uh, blow quite a number of holes in their shielding. And in the process, knocks their sensors offline. So let me do quick math here. So you did that. There's that much uh, remaining. Wouldn't we hit two systems because we did the torpedo spread? Yep, I'm just calculating that now. So let's see. So half of 14 is seven. Uh, so it's an additional two damage because of the resistance. But not enough to cause a second breach. Oh, wait. Torpedoes, high yield. You're right. So they have a structure. Interesting. Needless to say, the Okita does have some holes in it now. And you know what? I'll roll that challenge die, because you know what? It could matter. Doesn't help you, unfortunately. Um, and GM, sorry. Mm -hmm. I know in this round, previously, they had done scan for weakness with their sensors offline. Would they lose that benefit if they get their weapons back online? I'm going to say yes, because their sensors are offline. They would have to restore both sensors and weapons to get that effect back. But yeah, that was a uh, significant hit. And with that, we come to the top of initiative order. And uh, the Okita is going to get a turn to act here. So they're going to do two minor actions. First is going to be to restore weapons. Second is going to be to restore sensors. I have to spend threat to do that. So let me take off my threat. And then they are going to... What would they do, I wonder? Surrender? They're going to target <laughs> your engines. And they're going to open fire with their torpedoes. Now, I do want to say, I'm literally dumping all my threat on this. All of okay. it. Good. So, let's see what happens. Is it going to be really good or really bad? All right, so, uh, bad news, they did hit you. Uh, good news is their salvo isn't great, but because I generated a threat on that roll, I can reroll those three zeros. Okay, so that is a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six, so that's 12. Uh, 14, 15, 16 damage, if I read that correctly. So 16 damage, you have a resistance of 7, so you only take, what is that, 9? Nine? 9. So basically, you fired Quantums, they said, hey, that's a good idea, we fire Quantums. You know, kind of broadsiding each other at this point. Don't. But, I just remembered, they also have Scan for Weakness on you. So what I'm going to say is the breach. I thought you, I thought you said that they had to do it. That they had to do scan for weakness again once they got their sensors back up. You're right. Sorry, completely forgot. So yes, had they had that scan for weakness, it would have been very bad for you, very bad. Um, but let's see where the breach is. First of all, to sensors. Well, now your sensors are offline. But yeah, as the torpedoes sort of. How, oh, right. Sorry. Did they target the engines? They did target the engines. So your engines are going to get hit. But these... Okay, so sorry. I'm, I'm getting... I'm ahead of myself here. So the first hit does impact your engines. So you do immediately lose two power. And the second hit, the part that comes with the spread... Um, oh, God, we got to do spread. All right. Th this is why Starship Combat, we haven't done it a whole lot. And why I want to do just a little bit of it. Um... So the first hit is the engines. We already got that down. You already took the nine damage to shield. So you're at four shields right now. The second hit comes in at eight damage, which is another four after your resistance, I believe. Did I do that right? No. Resistance? Resistance. So no, it should be another three It'd damage. Be one. Only one. Yeah, only one more damage. So... The second breach, so the second breach is only to sensors because it had high yield. And that means, yes. Okay, so your sensors are down. You lost the two power. Whew, that was a little complicated. I apologize for that. Um, but I think that is correct, yes. Okay. 
again, starship combat can be wonky at times, <laughs> but you're almost is, at the point where you have meta victory conditions, so. Is it our turn? It is your turn, yes. Okay, do y'all trust me to pull somatic bullshit? Please do. All right, <laughs> uh, so minor action to restore sensors. Okay, sensors are back up. Okay, um, I want to, okay, do our, are we able to, are the shields on the Akita still up? Yes, they are approximately at one sixth of their shield strength. Okay. <laughs> um, so here's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get, I'm going to grab the uh, two Shin that are friendly towards us, and I'm going to get with them to set up a quantum communication to boost their telepathic abilities to allow them to speak to uh, their friendlies on the Okita. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to do a communication telling them, hey, uh, this is what I want. You know, it's like, hey, you know, kind of in a pickle right now, go here shut off power and distribute uh and like or like just sabotage engineering as best you can right now okay <clears throat> i would say that that would be a control engineering from you the ship yeah. will assist you with a communications and engineering the difficulty on this would be a two okay can i use the focus of quantum mechanics i'll allow it Okay, I'm also going to spend a point of determination. Uh, the Institute should approve, or I know I can complete my objectives. Having the Cochrane Medal of Excellence allows me to select a single focus, which is quantum mechanics. Whenever I spend a point of determination that involves that focus, I receive two benefits of having of using a point of determination instead of one. No, oh, which means you could uh, re-roll if this turns out badly. So what I'm going to do is... Da -da -da -da. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do make it so. Um, I want to have one of the friendly Shin be the chief engineer of the Akita. Okay. So that'll be the first one, which makes which creates me advantage. I still have one more uh, thing I can do for uh, determination, but I need to roll first. Mm -hmm. So troll engineering. Difficulty two. Mm -hmm. uh, let me spend a momentum to get a third dice. Apple focus. That is three successes, so you actually get that point of momentum right back. Okay. So, so what would then, you want to use that other benefit of uh, determination then? Um, does the chief engineer like do we get like we I'm assuming we get contact chief and like they say hey he says he's gonna do it? Yeah, we'll say that they pretty much relay the Martinez says yeah uh, we've apparently got the chief engineer on our side. What do you want him to do? Uh, cut the sh cut the power to shields. Okay, I have a problem. He says he's ejecting the core. That's fine. <laughs> uh, the moment their shielding goes down, I want to do surge of activity that allows me to perform another task as soon as this one gets resolved. So mm -hmm. once the core's out, because it's part of the action of me telling the chief engineer to make them drop power. Once mm -hmm. the core's out, I want to send the graviton beam over to eject all shin off the ship. Okay. Now, what I would say is this will, of course, end combat. Because um, not only is the Okita objecting its core, but just so you know, Matic, again, if you do this and you succeed on this task, you get rid of all shin on that vessel, including the one that just helped you. Uh, <laughs> because they literally ejected their core, they can't shield themselves in place. Right. Um, Matic will look at the uh, computer log that he is going to show the uh, battle. He'll look at his uh, two Shin friends and say, uh, acceptable casualties, and he'll initiate the Graviton Beam. Okay, very ruthless. Uh, this is going to be a daring engineering. Uh, this is a difficulty of four. The ship will assist you with a, let's call it a weapons and engineering. And yeah, it's it's a difficulty of four. Said weapons. And... Uh, no. Their shields are still up. 
Uh, their shields are down because they have ejected their core. So we can't beam over the guy that helped us. I, you could if you really wanted to. Uh, Jensen's with me, isn't he? Jensen is with you. Vassar was monitoring the shields. Vassar was. also was monitoring the shields. Vassar, would you have told Matic that at some point? Are you in the same room? If Matic, if no, Matic, I'm in engineering. If Matic is monitoring bridge communication, like comp chatter on the bridge, then he would have heard Vassar say something along the lines of, you know, standing by for shield strength. Okay. <clears throat> um. So let me adjust. So let me adjust what I'm going to do with my surge of activity. Um, once the shield goes down, mm -hmm. I want to try to pull over all of the shin that are on the friendly shin um, wavelength mm -hmm. um, that are and pull them onto engineering. And I'm going to have Jensen sitting there waiting to make sure this shit works. Okay. We'll say it just happens. And we'll now cut to Vassar. Vassar, the shields have been dropped. You're seeing that there's transporting taking effect from the Okita to the Fenrir, being activated by the Fenrir. So it's not like Okita is beaming over boarding parties. It's the Fenrir's pulling people. Captain, we appear to be beaming over members of the Okita crew while their shields are down. Matic to bridge. They're friendly. Fire the beam. Push the big button, Vassar. <laughs> All right. Vassar pushes the button. So, Vassar, uh, we're going to keep that weapons engineering role. Uh, for you, it is a daring and a science role, and it is still a difficulty of four. Would you happen to have an applicable value? Um... Well, I have been struggling with uh, reconciling my ethical subroutines with my security demands, but the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, and that is the value that I have. Mm -hmm. I'll let it happen. We have to make sure that the Federation is secure from this threat at all costs. You said uh, daring science. Daring science. And using the value gives me what? Uh, it gives you two free successes when you start off. Okay, so I roll two dice. Uh, and I don't think I have anything for graviton beams. So 2d20 it is. Uh, we have two momentum if you want to spend. That's not enough. Oh, no, no, no. We have success. Uh, an extra die because he's using determination. Right, but because he's... Right, he would be able to spend the two momentum to get the third oh, okay. dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's one, two, three. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. Yeah, he would have to spend all the momentum, but he could roll a third die. All right, I will spend the momentum for the third die. Let me try that again. Daring, Daring science. Yep. Submit. 3D20. Submit. No applicable focus. Submit. Don't die. All right. Well, that is a grand total of five successes, which means you get a point of momentum. So we sort of see two things happen at once. The Okita ejects its warp core and immediately the pylons and the power across the Okita dies off. And then from the deflector dish of the Fenrir, a whitish blue beam begins to coalesce in sort of a, a ball in front of the deflector. And then, like a solar flare almost, it rockets out from the Fenrir and just washes over the Okita. And after a few moments, uh, the beam shuts off and the Okita sort of sparks a little bit. Maybe it's got a little polarization along its hull. But for all intents and purposes, your sensors are detecting that uh, there are no Sean present on the Okita anymore. Captain, permission to beam over the Akita. Over to it? Yes, please. Do you know if they have hollow emitters? Or are you going to wear your special be one? My, be my emitter to the Akita, please. 
Okay. Do it. All right. Where do you want to go on the Okita? I want to beam to the bridge. Beam to the bridge. Well, I actually have a map prepared for this exact scenario. Nice. All right. So, Vassar, you beam to the bridge of the Okita. And uh, it looks about the same as you would expect from a... uh, a bridge that has seen some battle. Uh, there's some uh, ceiling tiles that have fallen. There's some rocks that have exploded out of consoles. But uh, what really matters to you, where I just had you, where did you go? There you are. Uh, as you beam in to the circular bridge, uh, what ends up happening is immediately as you take a look around, you see five unconscious forms. Uh, you see four generic red shirts whose names are not important. Uh, but then you see Captain Beer, and Captain Beer is not so much slumped over in her chair as in she is clutching where you know the symbiote is supposed to be and just sort of grimacing in unconscious pain. Um, I will uh, attempt to find a medical tricorder. There's one on the bridge. I think we've established pretty much on all Starfleet vessels that there is some form of a medical kit and a security kit. I will uh, I will scan Captain Beer's isoboramine levels to see how high or low they are and determine the status of her connection with her symbiote. Okay, that's going to be a reason medicine difficulty of two. And would xenobiology apply here? Most definitely. Very nice. I have bad news, though. Uh, Her connection with the symbiont is fading. It is almost as if her body is now rejecting the symbiont. Is she conscious? No, she is unconscious at the moment. She's unconscious. Um, Would a scan allow me to identify any biological damage to the symbiont itself, or even if it is still present? If you give me the momentum you just got, I will answer that question. Take it. Okay. So, yes, uh, you are partially on the right track. There it does appear to be damage to the symbiont. Almost as if the Sean infected the, the symbiont instead of Breer's mind. Um, can I use a... Uh, a neural can I connect to the Okita's uh, main computer and communications with my neural interface? I would say you could. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tap my com badge. Uh, medical emergency to the bridge. Um, extreme urgency. Okay. Uh, I do not have the knowledge in Trill uh, anatomy that would be required to save the symbiont. Um, using the neural interface, mm-hmm. I will uh, do uh, an internal sensor sweep for biological residue, residue related to Shan presence mm-hmm. and see if there are any left aboard. There's none. You've wiped them all out clean. Okay. Um, Okita to Fenrir. Fenrir. This is Lieutenant did. Commander Vassar. It seems our efforts were successful. Um, Captain Beer is in dire emergency medical need. Hopefully the uh, Okita medical staff will be here soon. I'll check internal sensors to see if uh, there are any life signs responding in medical. Let's just say that the whole unconscious thing across the ship is across the ship. So you are actually probably the only quote unquote being that is active at the moment. Uh, we need emergency medical response teams to the bridge uh, and possibly emergency teams to engineering as well. Captain. Um, can you, is any, do you know if anybody else is in distress on the uh, ship? Internal sensors say that everybody is unconscious. Uh, the only person that I have personally scanned is the captain herself. Okay, I think it might be worth beaming her over here. Understood. Uh, I will send the coordinates to you. In the interim, Captain, it might be wise to 
beam emergency teams over to the Okita, as well as Commander Rast to assume temporary command until the crisis is over. Uh, good call. Let's do that instead. Uh, Captain, permission to join the away teams? Sure. Thank you. All right. And I tell you what, we've been going for about an hour and 30 minutes. Why don't we take our 10-minute break right there? So, yeah, we will be back in uh, 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around.
<laughs> All right, and welcome back, everyone. So, uh, if you didn't see what happened before the break, what happens was the Fenrir managed to find the Okita, and with a little luck, a little uh, trading of broadsides, uh, the Fenrir has triumphed and has gotten rid of all of the Shan on the Okita. However, the problem is, is that apparently the captain, Captain Beer, the joined Trill, the Shan that had infested her infested her symbiont instead, and she's now fighting for her life within sickbay on the Fenrir. So we open our scene back up with both Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin and Captain Archuleta stepping into sickbay as nurses and staff are running in and out of the operating room and commander Saneri is doing her damnedest to you know essentially save the symbiont and uh as she maybe notices maybe archuleta or lee out of the corner of her eye she says i captain uh, lieutenant commander i i i don't think i could save it we're we're probably gonna lose both unless something happens here Give me a minute to scrub up, and I'll assist you. And I will sterilize my hands and get into a surgical gown, and I will join her in the operating room. Okay. Uh, why don't you roll me a reason and medicine difficulty of one? Okay. Um, I will also use my augmented ability reason for that. Okay. So, augmented ability reason... Very nice. That is a total of four successes. So you get uh, three momentum. Very nice. So yeah, Lee, it's not good. Uh, the symbiont is not only rejecting Beer's body, but Beer is rejecting the symbiont itself. But there's also a significant amount of neural scarring within the symbiont that even if you were to save it, Let's just say that it's not going to be bonding with another Trill probably for the rest of, it, rest of its life. It's that bad. Hmm. Can I ascertain the nature of this scarring? Is it possible that it was caused by not the um, invasion of the Shan, but a sort of sub, some kind of subspace disruption? Uh, you're the science officer, so I'm going to give this to you free. Um, the neural scarring was a direct result of the way you removed the Sean from the captain, i.e. when you did that pulse, that gravit gravimetric, ah, the graviton pulse, um, you essentially ripped it out of the symbiont and caused this damage. Not you, you, but you know what I mean. Mm. Doctor... Uh I don't see any way of, there's no way to save them. And at this scenario, he sort of frowns, looks to the captain and says, Captain, I, I can maybe resuscitate them for a few minutes, but it would have to be quick. Okay. And Please uh, do. she gets a hypo spray, kind of it's into the neck and uh, beer's eyes flutter open. She looks around and says, ah, where, where am I? Where? And she locks eyes on you, Archuleta. You're on the USS Fenrir. We were in the same space as you, and your ship was overtaken by a hostile parasite. Yes, I, I, I remember some of it. It was like, like I was a prisoner within my own mind, watching myself. I, and she kind of looks down and pokes her belly. It killed beer, didn't it? I, I can't feel beer anymore. Yes. Unfortunately, the damage was to your symbiote. I don't have long, do I? I'm afraid not, but... Your crew is safe. Your ship has survived. You kept them safe. Well, at least that's small comfort then. Can you do something for me? And uh, she raises a shaking, wearily hand and sort of points at one of the screens. Can you put up a picture of my family? 
computer, create a holographic representation of the captain's family. And sure enough, uh, with that command, a holographic representation of Captain Beer's family appears around her. And she sort of looks around at all of them, smiles and says, thank you. And then her eyes go down and all the instrumentation in the sick bay indicate that she is flatlined. She is no longer with you. And Commander Sneri says, note the time in the log. Death occurred at 2315. It was uh, nothing we could do. And then Saniri is just going to kind of shake her head and sort of rub her hands together and say, well, I hope I don't have to repeat that process with the rest of the Okita crew. Uh, losing a captain is one thing, but an entire ship of that? No. No, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Um, I, I suppose stay with the body as long as you wish, but eventually we are going to need to move her to the morgue. Very well, Doctor. Thank you for doing everything you could. Of course, Captain. And then, yeah, she uh, steps out to leave you uh, sort of with the body. Lee is going to walk over to the body and just stare at her face for a moment. And you'll see he almost snarls and turns his back to it. Um and just starts sort of staring off in the distance. Bree will walk over, not invade his personal space too much, but we'll get in his peripheral. Mm -hmm. And um, she will adopt a very gentle tone. It seems like that was harder for you than I expected. I killed her, Captain. This is my fault. I did this. It's... Walk me through the logic. <laughs> what, what logic is there? I designed this. I didn't think about how it might interact with drill physiology. I didn't think about the symbiote. I, I was so fixated on solving the problem that I didn't think about the consequences. Matic may have, <laughs> may have disabled the vessel the SAR may have triggered the beam, but I designed it. I came up with the idea. This is, this is my fault. This life might be, or it could be the SARS who pushed the button, but in both of your actions, you've saved countless other lives. Not good enough. Not good enough, damn it. There's always a way. There's always a way to save everyone. We just have to find it. We just have to be clever enough. We just have to be smart enough to do it. And I wasn't. Well, I understand if you need to take a few days of personal time. What, so more people can die while I'm nursing my wounds? I don't think so, Captain. And he sort of deflates for a moment. I'm sorry, Captain. I know what you're trying to do, and I appreciate that. I don't need you to appreciate what I'm trying to do, Lee, but I do need you to keep doing what you're doing because you're doing a great job, whether you think it or not. Lee, as you're about to reply... The world around you specifically goes blank. You are in a white void. And a woman, maybe 6'2", 6'3", she's taller than you, uh, looks to be of, I'd say, uh, Bajoran descent. She's got the earrings, she's got the ridges. And uh, she looks to you, has a very kind face, and says, This one is troubled. 
Lee will drop to his knees and assume that posture of Bajoran prayer, reaching his hands out to the sides, and he will bow his head before her and not say anything. It is trying to worship us. And then a second copy of her comes on view. It does not need to worship us. Far be it for me to question your wisdom, great prophet, but you're worthy of all devotion and all honor. I, I, what is it that you need of me? So the scene shifts again, and I'm going to actually put us on theater of the mind because we're going to go rapid fire through a lot of quick scenes. So the first scene, as you, as the surroundings around you sort of swirl and twirl and come back into being, you're on the bridge of the Fenrir where you are watching on the view screen. You're literally watching yourself watching the view screen as that gravitic beam is firing out and hitting the Okita. And one of the prophets kind of walks in front of you and says, this beam gave life. And then the other prophet walks in from the other side, but it also took life. And then there's another flash. You're back in the sick bay. You're looking at Captain Beer as she is flatlining and says, the life that was given and the life that was gained, it is all in equilibrium. And then there's another flash. Suddenly you're on a planet that you can't really discern where you are or what planet this is. It's entirely alien to you. All you know is that you're in some form of a grassy field. And when you look up, you see not one, not two, not three, but a grand total of six moons that are in the heavens. And the prophet walks up next to you and says, you must go here. You must find them for it is through them that you will find peace. And then all of that backs back to reality. You are pretty much mid conversation with Archuleta once more. And you'll see that Lee is just trembling, staring off at the distance. Um, she'll put a hand on his shoulder. <sighs> oh. Captain? Did I lose you there for a second? Uh, I think that someone else found me. Um, uh, I, I think that I just had a vision from the prophets. It was unlike anything I've... No, it was like... It was like meeting Commander Sisko again. When you could feel the love of the prophets reaching out to you. As if it was something physical. What did they say? Did they have a message for you? They said that I had to go to a planet with six moons and there I'd find peace. All uh, right. I'm sorry, Captain. It's all, it's all a jumble. The images came so fast. I, I need, I need time. I need time to think. Uh, why don't, why don't you take me up on those? days off uh, yes captain I, I think that I will and if she'll let him he's just going to sort of stumble off towards his quarters she'll let him go yeah all right and that is why I wanted to have a scene with Lee and the captain because of that reason all right well, with that still a bit of role play, let's cut over oh. to the Okita Bridge, where I believe Vassar, you, and Rast are at least here. Uh, was anyone else going over? I know we had Lee potentially going over, but I think now for reasons, Lee is going to take a few days off. Alel can be over there. Alel can certainly be over there. I don't know why uh, Alel keeps being small, but... She's pretty tiny, yeah, okay. And then Maddox, I don't know if Maddox would be on the bridge or if you'd be an engineering helping put the warp core back in. No, we'll say we'll say you're on the Okita putting it back in. But if they need you, they can get you, kind of a thing. All right. Vassar will be tapped into 
uh, internal sensors and internal comms to help direct any uh, uh, information for doctors or uh, repair teams. Okay. Uh, why don't you, let's see, Commander, well, let's ask this. Commander Rash, what are you doing while all this is going on? The top priority is uh, attending to the Akita crew. Um, I know that Maddox can handle his own shit, so mm -hmm. I have no worries about engineering being t handled. Um, but uh, it's all about just accounting for the crew, making sure the crew is uh, in good shape. Okay. Also, RJ, you're moved over a little bit to the side on the camera. Oh, sorry. Uh, so what I would say <coughs> is, uh, Rast, why don't you give me a insight and a command difficulty of one? <laughs> and if you have uh, people reading or behavioral analysis, that would apply. Insight and command? Yep, you got it. Okay. And I do have uh, behavioral analysis. Mm-hmm. All right, which with two successes, you get a point of momentum. So the more you interact with the crew Rast of the Okita, what you realize is that all of them have the same sort of vacant and lost expression that is indicate, indicative that, how do I put this? Indicative. I don't think, thank you. I always say it wrong. Um, I don't think anyone in this group's experienced it, and I myself haven't experienced it, so this is kind of secondhand. But it's kind of like being in a coma and then waking up after 5, 10, 15 years. There's just such a gap in knowledge and a gap in um, experience that it's like everything around you doesn't feel right. It feels alien. And that's the general feel you're getting from everyone on the Okita crew, as if... They don't know what's going on. They are lost, for lack of a better word. They are damaged, in a way. Uh, he is going to uh, grab a hold of one of them and uh, go into uh, read their minds and see if there's any sort of um, mental lock that he could potentially pick. Okay. Uh, I'll give it to you free, but when you reach out with your mind, telepathy, uh, what you realize is that that mental scarring that I talked about with the symbiont, mm -hmm. same thing has happened to all of them. Okay. Now, it's not something you could fix. Like, there, as far as I know, in the Star Trek universe, there is not an easy way to fix mental damage. Um... So, but this is something you would notice. This this is something medically relevant that you would pick up on. Oh. Which is, which kind of leads to his question of, since, you know, medically, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like there's anything that can be done, but knowing the mind and how the mind works and, and the pathways of the mind and mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, addicts can be taught to access different parts of their mind and have things fire in different ways mm -hmm. and get around potential damage. Does he think with time that he might be able to help some individuals? Yes, I would say that with the right sort of treatment, the Okita crew could once again be fully functional. But you're not even sure looking at them that they're going to be able to get back to Deep Space Daedalus, much less even a light year down the road. Mm -hmm. um, Keep in mind, Deep Space Daedalus may also be infiltrated by these entities. Certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, On top of whoever else it's already been spread to. Uh, Rast is going to communicate to the captain. Um, we're going to confine the crew here to quarters we will need a skeleton crew here um i do not believe anyone on this vessel is capable of assisting in the piloting of this uh, ship back to where we need to go um this is the captain 
what makes you think that? What are you seeing? There's mental scarring from the uh, procedure that we uh, utilize to eject the entities from the crew here. I believe given time, I could work around those that scarring in their minds. But we're talking a full crew here, Captain. Right. But I can okay. definitely see it's it's almost as if the last decade has been wiped from their minds almost. They're all in a haze, a fog. Sounds like the deflector method is just too violent to eject the creatures and maybe in the future we should focus on the sunlight method instead. The next time we meet with one of these individuals, if we are able to isolate, if we are able to isolate one, I would like to experiment with my methodology as well in a controlled environment. If we can learn more about them, I'll allow that. But until we are able to get more information on not just what happened here on this ship, but wherever else this is a problem, I just don't feel comfortable with you doing that. I agree. So Maddox is uh, probably going to be done any second now in engineering, but he and his crew are are working diligently. <clears throat> Was there anything uh, else that you had, Captain? Um, GM, anything else that we've learned? I would say not at this time. Um, unfortunately, a side effect of the gravitic pulse was that the computer logs from the Okita were white. Okay. So you don't even have personal logs. You don't have actual logs. A whole chunk of the computer has been totally wiped. And needless to say, Maddox got his work cut out for him. But you've said it yourself. The gravitic pulse was a sledgehammer where maybe you needed just a little hammer instead. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead. Assuming that there's been medical crew brought over and there's any with them in engineering, mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming Maddox would just kind of be like, hey, everybody kind of looks zombie and lobotomized. Uh, he'll, he'll want to talk with, I guess, the chief engineer of this ship. And uh, he's just going to ask, um, are y'all able to move from host to host or are y'all just, once y'all latch onto somebody, you're that person? And uh, the officer replies, we can move from host to host. Um, the primary, Sean, like to experience as many hosts as possible, part of their whole controlled dominion thing. Um, and he needs to say being forcibly taken from a host is scarring in both ways. Um, Matt... Matic just kind of takes a breath and just kind of stares at the console for a second. Um, you know, noticing how people are somewhat scarred from this, would it be possible for you to move to one of these injured hosts and see if you could repair any of the damage? Or Unfortunately, uh, in my experience, from what I know and have been told, once this sort of thing happens, it becomes extremely difficult for anyone, well, let me take that back, for any of the Sean to once again take over a host, even if it is consensual. Do y'all come from uh, subspace? So do you, are y'all familiar with the Upterrans or the uh, Drag Knights or any of the other subspace species or... Uh, the Opterans sound familiar, but I've never met one. Do you think sure, there's just anything... because I'm from subspace, you think I know Bobby? <laughs> uh, 
do you think that there is anything in subspace that could help? I don't know. Unfortunately, I just don't know. Um, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, Matic. Are you, are you good? Do you mind if yeah, I um, Matic. Uh, yeah, Matic, I'm done. Okay. Can we snap back to Defender for a second? I assume Williams sure. was on the bridge and heard that little exchange between... Yeah, I'd say you would have rest. heard all of it. Uh, hey, she's back! No, she's not. Go away. <laughs> she's dead. <laughs> oh, how cruel Watney has actually posed her on the bridge. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just struck, spread just eagle. Struck, it's a uh, yeah, weekend at struggle. Archuleta. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Mirror Archuleta would do, but... Yeah. <laughs> Captain, this sounds pretty serious. Yeah, we've definitely won the battle. But at this point, who are we going to report to? I need to try and find a way to get a hold of... Uh, Starfleet intelligence because I who knows who's compromised at um, headquarters in the meantime there may be something we can do for these folks the ones who've been injured by this I'm listening I mean we've got a number of Vulcan crew members aboard perhaps they can initiate some sort of psychic contact through, say, a mind meld and maybe help guide those people back. I don't know the I'm specifics not, of it, but... I mean, I'm not sure, based on these reports, that it's even... It's, it's an issue of them being lost. It's an issue of brain damage. Well, I mean, at the risk of sounding philosophical, maybe those are the same thing. So if I punch you in the head right now, <laughs> it's not the same thing. It's it's the same thing as you just having a daydream. No. Now you're, now you're just being smart. Yeah. That's clearly not the same thing. I mean, and honestly, I wouldn't subject any Vulcan on board to what residual effects those crew are having. To do with them what would you say what, what are we going to do with them well for now i think we uh like mr ras said we can find them to their quarters and um offer do them even, counseling as needed do we even know if they're self-sufficient will they have the wherewithal to eat sleep the good news is that yeah, they can figure out how to eat still, and they, they, they wipe their they, butts. Yeah, they can wipe their yeah, butts. Yeah, yeah they, just, um, <laughs> um, all of the medical scans so far, or do does everyone have like the same level, or are there varying levels? I would say there's varying levels. As Rast goes into a rave. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was trying to get my red alert working, so I could have the. Uh, Okay. So if there's varying levels, then we could probably try to uh, start off with the least damaged and see what methods work. Well, yeah. In the meantime, we're going to have to drop a list for a command staff to that ship. How many friendly shin did I pull off? Roll me a D100. One hundred. Three. <laughs> <laughs> you rescued 35. Okay, so there's enough to get the ship back. Potentially, but most of them are engineers. <laughs> What's wrong with that? That's all you need. I uh, mean, could we they send keep the our ship unnamed con <laughs> officer over there to help? Yeah, you can move your unarmed ship. con. Yeah, she can go over. Um. Come on, Captain. Don't don't us don't, don't uh, be stingy with my crew. 
Who's over there I, already? Might I suggest Ensign Jensen? You know I don't like him. Well, that that way he's not even aboard. Great idea. Jensen? <laughs> Jensen's on the Okita. I hate um, you guys. <laughs> So are we are we saying we have two ships now? At the moment, yes. Yeah. Commander Rast, I'm dizzy. I think I'm. <laughs> I think it's this these these Shan fumes. It's just gonna be like <laughs> Rast is gonna have a phaser on stun on his lap. <laughs> just um, care of, uh... How good is Williams at like astrometrics, like navigation, and like? figuring out where a planet might be based on logs and databases. Uh, Who's the best here at that? I mean, what would that, what would that entail, GM? Uh, that would probably be a reason and a con. And if you have astrometrics, astronavigation. Helm uh, operations? Maybe helm operations. Yeah, I'd give it to you. I've got a, I've got a 13. It's not terrible, but it could be better. Okay. Uh, she's going to, like, come over to where you're sitting and just, like, point at your screen and be like, see if you can find me a planet with, like, six moons. Six moons. All right. You know, while I'm doing that, there's something that's been on my mind. If the Okita picked up these compromised crew, Deep Space Daedalus, and struck out here for the Unknown Frontier, where were they going? Why were they out here? If their whole ploy was to take over the Federation, why travel away from it? Maybe there's more... Well, there's either more ships that are infected or there's something else out here. And Williams, I'm going to give this to you free. You've run the scan. There is indeed a planet with six moons, approximately two light years distant. That class M. could work. It's a class M environment. Should be habitable. There's no life. Well, at this distance, you can't really tell life. But as far as you know, there's nothing living on that planet other than plant life and uh, little fauna. Yeah, I think I've got it, Captain. Of course, 187 Mark 3-2. Class M, huh? Um, yeah. How I mean, how long would it take us to get there? Yeah. At the always speed of dodge, plot, basically. Always a little dodgy on the uh, the speed the, of the warp, plot. the warp mathematics. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I think two light years. If you were to go maximum warp, it's like a couple hours. But if you go yeah. at like warp five, it's a little bit longer. But like it's I a mean, few okay. days. Okay. If we uh, yeah. Strike um, out of warp six at the cruising speed, we can be there in a day and a half. Okay. Uh before we go anywhere, I'm gonna see if I can get a hold of Starfleet Intelligence. Okay. Are you gonna do that from the bridge or are you gonna do it in your ready room? I'm gonna do it in my ready room. Okay. So uh, give me one second to set up the scene. As she walks away, William says, Don't forget to uh Engage blackout protocols. Okay. He's like, so I don't hear the conversation again. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Wait, did someone overhear me? No, I you. A whole, oh, you just uh, saw you, the codes and saw it was serious. Well, you, you tripped it. You tripped an internal stent. I got a, I got an alert <laughs> about it. So just be a little more careful. Mm. So, Captain, don't be so noisy. <laughs> so, Captain, trying my job. When uh, when you step into your ready room, uh, what you see God is that there it. is someone already there waiting for you. <sighs> for a second, I thought I was walking into my office. But it clearly looks like you've made yourself at home. And uh, she sort of looks over to you. And for those who can't see the screen, uh, Lady Q, Madam Q, not like the Q from Voyager, Lady Q, but different Q. Um, but the Q, Fenrir's Q, has shown up. Again in uh, Starfleet Blue, uh, wearing the pips of a commander. 
Uh, she just sort of leans back on the couch and says, well, I thought we could chat for a little bit. The last time I was here was uh, not of my own volition. Hmm. Sounds serious. Lucky for you, I just got finished firing a bunch of torpedoes. So, got plenty of time. I came because you're about to make contact with a species that, let's just say, will shape the Federation for decades, if not centuries, to come. Thanks for the heads up. And just know that Q's test, the trial of humanity, it's still ongoing. Would she know about that? Uh, I think it's probably at least for captain level. You would know Picard's sort of interactions with okay. Delancey Q. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm lucky to have inherited it along with my own Q. Well, when you come out this way and you start tripping over things, it's only natural that one of us comes by. Oh, by the way, I fixed your bear thing, whatever you call it. <clears throat> oh, that. Um, what do you mean you fixed it? And uh, your little salat comes running out normal size. Like it's a little it's like a little thing again. It comes running up to you and it goes, hi, mom. How you doing? Ah, uh, it didn't talk before. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Was it not supposed to talk? It, yeah, uh, you know, whatever you think is best. <laughs> you made it after all, didn't you? You humans are so strange. But just know, Captain, we're watching. We're always watching. <laughs> Flashes away. Ding. <laughs> Great. Uh, she's going to obviously be um take a moment to uh absorb that information mm -hmm. pull her uniform down and then go over to her console to do what she originally came there to do okay so is your intention to reach the commodore in specifics or just anyone at starfleet intel uh the commodore specifically okay so when you get a line back to starfleet you are told that there is no Commodore Unus. There never has been a Commodore Unus. For a second, she wishes the Q could come back. <laughs> um, she'll close the console and not initiate anything further from there. Okay. And then um, she'll tr uh, press her comm badge and ask RJ to come into her ready room. On my way. And in steps, Mr. Williams. <sighs> well, uh, I just had an interesting call, or lack thereof. Turns out the Commodore that reached out to me doesn't exist. Well, a deniable Starfleet intelligence asset. Who would have thought? Still, that leaves us in a rough spot. Mm hmm. What do you want to do? You know, I'll back okay. you either way. I want to head to that planet. I guess we can tow the Okita. <laughs> or someone can fly it behind us. If they get the... If they can rig the warp fields for transit, then they can follow us with the skeleton crew. It's easy enough. Right. Well, whenever they're ready. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll see to it. You, uh... You Okay. Well, I don't think my brain is taken over by a hostile parasite, so all things considered, I'm doing quite well. I just need to get some sleep. <laughs> well, no time like the present, Captain. I can stay and watch here for a little while. Sounds good to me. 
And as we pull away from the captain's ready room, we rejoin the bridge of the Okita, where I believe, Dag, you had a specific scene you had requested. You're muted. Yes, you are muted. Opal's up, Rast. Commander <laughs> Rast, I need to return to and Vassar's holographic matrix dematerializes and his emitter falls to the floor. Wow. Rast will go over and pick it up. Um, and he'll, uh, he'll call down to Maddox. Maddox, do you have anybody uh, good with holograms down there that you can spare? I'm just going to say his name begins with Jen and ends with <laughs> Sin. Uh, Commander, is something going on with Vassar? He'd be the one to talk to about holograms. As soon as whatever resource you send me can get Vassar back up and running, we can ask Vassar. Okay. Um, I'm pretty much done here. Uh, I'll send Jensen up, and then me and him will um, convene in my lab, um, and we'll figure out what's going on with Vassar back on the uh, Fenrir. All right, come see me. <laughs> come see me with uh, when you're when you're leaving, and uh, Rass looks around real quick just to make sure everybody's busy, mm -hmm. and um, he takes the emitter. And kind of polishes where it fell on the ground. Oh. Wipes off the dirt on it. Kind of thing. Oh. Very noble of you. And I think on that noble bit of action, that is where we're going to pull back out into space and sort of pan just so we see stars. And that's where we're going to end today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> that is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so how did you guys like it? I uh, I was waiting to throw a few things at you guys, and uh, yeah, I think it went pretty well. Yeah. I, I have so hopefully. many questions. So many questions. Hopefully we'll get some answers when we get to this planet. Mm -hmm. Oh, a good cliffhanger goes. We'll see. Hopefully we're not going somewhere is, we shouldn't be going. Is this, this going to be considered a three-parter? I think so. I think technically we, this is a three part. Are we still streaming? Yeah, we're still on. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I didn't know if, <laughs> if I like just glance past the fucking goodbyes or whatever. I just. <laughs> but yeah, uh, all things considered, I thought that was a good episode. Lots of uh, fun little twists, even a little heavy drama there thrown in for some good mm -hmm. mixture. I uh, did enjoy Lovecraftian's uh, excellent oh. uh, reaction to the experience and all that. That was very mm -hmm. well done. I can't. I'm, I'm glad you're going to give me a week to come up with some techno babble regarding holographic exigence. <laughs> well, and we're going to have to resolve Deep Space Daedalus. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the Federation by this point. <sighs> I, I, I say we just split the party. Is it intended? We go, that two this? ships. We go in, no, we go into multi-vector assault mode, and we all go in a different I mean, direction. On one <laughs> hand, two ships means we're really we're, we're we're setting the stage for Archuleta to do some serious command opportunities mm -hmm. and, and, and and lay the groundwork for possible Commodore Archuleta. Fleet mm -hmm. Captain Archuleta, right now. Mm -hmm. If 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 the intention here, and I don't know, I'm a player in the game, so if you're watching, <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, these Shan could be our season-long nemesis. They are season-long so far. Yeah. Wow, two of two, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, so the so the uh, Shan are our version of the. Uh, oh, what were those bastards on Voyager? The blue, the bluegills from the, Conspiracy. The, uh, the 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 Kazon, you mean? Yeah, the Kazon. That's not good, guys. Yeah, but I mean, they're probably more closely associated with those life forms that Equinox was trying to drain for warp energy. Mm. Many questions, only so many answers. Mm -hmm. Also, sidebar, I first saw Conspiracy when I was a real little kid in that part where they blow oh, they up blew up the guy. The alien. Yeah, it still... scared the bejesus out of me. As still a child. the most gory thing I think Star Trek yeah. has ever done. There Couldn't believe that... they went there. 
there was that in season one and in season two the episode loud as a whisper with uh the dead man or the deaf man his yeah. chorus gets disintegrated yeah. oh yeah that one i remember the muscles the, ske- and the, the skeletons. skeletons yeah so for everybody saying that Star Trek has never been gory, go rewatch uh, TNG yep. season one and two. Yeah, it, yep. uh, it don't gets don't do that. We we can't actually recommend that you do that. Maybe <laughs> just just to measure a man. <laughs> yeah. We're not responsible for what happens to you if you do. Yeah. Oh God! All right. So before we get into a Trek debate, I think and that's we why are I'm in no the way stream. affiliated with. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everybody. Yeah, thanks guys. for watching, guys. Okay. See you stream. Bye, guys. Bye.